Hey everyone, Garland Coulson, Captain Time here, and today I want to talk about six political systems we should totally steal from sci-fi and fantasy. Now some of you are probably going, well wait Garland, what do political systems have to do with time management? And you know, our political systems are, they define everything around us, how we work, our culture, how we spend our leisure time. So they have a huge impact, you know, whether you can start a business, whether the you know, polit political system has, you know, really um, good programs to be able to do these kinds of things. Uh, how much time do we spend talking about politics? I mean, that's a huge, huge time waster alone. So definitely political systems have a lot to do with time management. And sci-fi is like a fantastic source of alternative political systems. And, you know, while I may not be an expert on political systems, I have been reading science fiction for over 50 years. Uh, I probably read anywhere from five to 10 books a week. So as you can imagine, I've read a ton of science fiction uh, stories in my time. And these are my personal picks. So this is not meant to be an exhaustive review of all the political systems uh, proposed by science fiction. It's really just the ones I've come across that resonated with me and that I found very intriguing. And of course, the usual spoiler alerts, if you haven't read some of these books yet or, or been exposed to some of them yet, uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, by talking about this, I would give you some spoilers. So, uh, you know, if you see something come up and you want to wait till you read the book, just skip past that part of the video. So let's get started with the six political systems we should totally steal from sci-fi or fantasy. Number six, the Federation from Star Trek, created in 1966, and it was a shining vision of a future where racism was largely eliminated. There were many alien races working together. Uh, hunger and poverty were gone. This was probably made easier by the use of replicators, where as long as you had energy, you had pretty much unlimited food to feed people. Money was not the central focus uh, in the Federation, uh, and, and you know everybody was guaranteed certain sentient rights. So a very visionary thought for the future. Uh, you know, it had its, of course, there's issues, you know, like uh, Section 13 and other things. No, no, no political system is perfect. But certainly the average person would probably be, do far better off under the uh, Federation than people today. And certainly people who are homeless or don't have enough food to eat, those people would definitely do a lot better under the Federation. Number five, Valdemar in the Valdemar universe. Uh, it is a series written by Mercedes Lackey. There's about 33 books in the series. I think the first one was published about 1987, which I think was Errol's Flight, which was the, the beginning for it. So it's kind of interesting. Uh, this is the first and only fantasy on the list. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are going to say, well, wait a minute, isn't Valdemar a monarchy? How is, you know, how is this going to work? So, so most fantasy, you know, a lot of it was, you know, seems to be set in top, back in time or in medieval areas or alternative worlds. A lot of it's feudal or kingships or, you know, uh, monarchies, things like that, that, that usually they're not really um, all that enlightened. And yeah, you might get a really good king this time or a queen, but maybe their son or daughter isn't very good and, you know, they get greedy or something. So eventually you end up with a bad one. So Valdemar is a monarchy. So why do I think it's a good political system to pinch? So Valdemar has something called companions. And companions are spirit creatures that take the form of a white horse. And they only choose to be with people of good heart, people who are brave, uh, people who, who are good hearted. These people become heralds. And heralds are a combination of messengers, peacekeepers, diplomats, guards, soldiers, and they even deal with civil disputes. So they're, they're really, um, you know, kind of the conscience of the kingdom, so to speak. So when you're a royal heir, you can only become an heir to the throne if you were also chosen by a companion. So the heirs must also be a herald. 
and only in that case are they eligible to assume the throne. So if a queen, for example, um, marries a, you know marries someone, uh, and that person doesn't become a herald, that's only the co the consort, the queen consort. They're <clears throat> they're uh, not going to be able to rule. And similarly, if if the king marries a queen, you know, then that queen is not able to actually rule unless they're also a herald. So this is a, uh, it's, it's kind of a break on greedy, you know, people being greedy, those kinds of problems, uh, people being cruel, like you're just not going to have those kinds of things, because these companions can see into your heart, into your soul, and will only choose you in the event that you you have that case. So number four is freehold of, I think it's called Grain, uh, published 2004 by Michael Z. Williamson. So Freehold tells the story of Kendra Paselli. She's a young soldier on Earth. Uh, and it's a very authoritarian United Nations uh, version of Earth. She's accused of a crime she didn't commit. So she flees Earth for the free freehold of, uh, of Grain. Uh, she has to adapt to a new culture where it's ultra libertarian, uh, you know, and et cetera. It's, it's a very interesting book. It's one I really quite enjoyed. The interesting thing about the uh, freehold of grain society is it's very libertarian, but it's been big on individual rights, but it's also small government, small taxation. So it's got aspects of both conservative and liberal, you know, and um, liberal type of, of things there. It's a true free market society and it expects people to pull their own weight. And so the earth government in the book is at this point is quite corrupt. It's a welfare state. Um, you know, so freehold isn't perfect you know, because not all people are good. It's not utopia. But in essence, it gives people a chance to prosper if they're willing to work hard. Number three, and this is a uh, the Chironians from a book called Voyage to Yesteryear by James P. Hogan, published in 1982. And uh, this is a book I, I really quite enjoyed. So the, the background of it is that um, Earth, you know, fearing Earth might not be sur sur able to survive, uh, people from Earth send out an automated probe to a planet in the Alpha Centauri system. It's early in the 21st century. So it, they can't go faster than light yet, so it's going to take many years to get there. So people can't survive and live. So what they do is they send a bank of human knowledge, and they send genetic material, raw genetic material that you can create children from, and robots to care for the children when they get there. So the probe reports back to Earth that they did find a habitable planet, and the first generation of children have been raised successfully, and later on Earth loses contact. So, so five generations later, uh, there's new technology. So Earth hasn't been destroyed quite yet. Uh, but new technology lets Earth send some manned colony ships out to check on what's, what's going on with the Chir Chironians. So each of the, then there's a number of surviving power blocks, North America, Europe, and Asia. So each of them are sending a, a ship. But the North American ships do to arrive first. The North American ship... Uh, has a very authoritarian regime, religious leaders, a strong military presence. And the assumption is that they will easily assume control of the colony when they arrive to protect it, of course, from the European and Asian bloc uh, ships that are going to be arriving soon. So they're, they're assuming, you know, it's for their own good. We're, we, we're going to have to, you know, take control of them, build up their defenses and this kind of thing. Tronian society is really quite unusual, though. The newcomers find a society, seemingly naive people, with no class system, no government. Uh, there's no money. Factories easily turn out enough for everybody. People just take and use what they need. There's no accumulation of wealth. Uh, a Tronian will happily step aside if someone with more skill wants to do a task because they value competence. But, of course, they ignore people who are blowhards or phony or don't, don't have that skill or confidence. They only value what's real. Tronians are charming, politely interested in the newcomers. I think all the newcomers are a little bit uptight and cuckoo, especially those in charge. So the North American, you know, real authoritarian regime is confused. Who's even in charge? There is no president. There is no person that seems to be in charge. And if they take over, will anybody pay attention to them? And many, but many of the passengers and even members of the military are starting to find the uh, way of life on Chironia, uh, the Chironian way of life to be very attractive. So... Number two on my list is a fairly unknown book. Most people I talk to have never heard of it. It's a two-book series. starts with Saturnalia, 
uh, published in 1986, and A Lion and Tarthi, uh, which is published in 1987, and these are written by Grant Callan. It's one of my favorite series that's really well written. Uh, it, it's a fantastic uh, series uh, where the first book deals with, um, you know, finding alien artifacts in the in the um, solar system that they have to follow a series of puzzles to figure out what's going on. The second book has where they can actually meet the aliens. So some interesting things about the alien culture is it's run largely on humor. So essentially, um, politicians will often get into office uh, based on a great joke play, a joke play. Uh, they have to be able to laugh at themselves. Uh, humor is highly, highly, you know, rated there. And, uh, you know, the people, humans are kind of uptight, <laughs> comparatively speaking. So, you know, you're in danger of getting laughed off the planet if in business and, and in negotiations if you don't have a sense of humor. So really intriguing uh, you know, a very intriguing society, very intriguing look at it. One I really enjoyed. Great written books. I'd highly recommend. Probably can only find, I think you can find Saturnalia now as an ebook on Amazon. But, you know, certainly if you can find it used somewhere, grab it. it. It's well worth a read. So before we get to number one, a couple of honorable mentions. One is Beta Colony, which is part of the Vorkosigan series uh, by Lois McMaster Bujold. And Lois McMaster Bujold is one of my favorite authors. She's fantastic. She's written many good books. The reason this isn't in the top six is because Beta Colony is not really the main focus. Uh, it's more Bariar, which is a feudal one, which is the main focus and, and how, you know, people from Beta Colony uh, kind of, you know, interact with that and, and these kinds of things. But Beta Colony is a great uh, society, very, uh, you know, they uh, will... Um, Accept anyone, like it doesn't matter if you're androgynous, uh, if you're gay, any any of the different uh, things are all fine and they they are all fine with all of those. And it's a really open, welcoming society that, that uh, you know, rate, uh, rates competence highly. Another one is Rescue Party by Arthur C. Clarke, short story many years ago. And again, I didn't include it because it's only a short story. We didn't get to explore it, but... Um, the rescue party that arrives at Earth trying to help when they find out it's about to go Nova is an alliance of many different species uh, all together in an alliance that come together. And again, I didn't include it as a major one here because we didn't get to explore much of it because it was only a short story, but it would have been interesting to find out more. And so let's look at the winner of Garland's preferred political systems he'd love to steal. And the winner is the United Planets Council. First Salic War, author Gene Johnson, released uh, July 2015. It's a trilogy that starts with the Terrans. And what I love about this one is that the counselors involved here serve their constituents first. And they have to take an oath of office every day to remind themselves of who they're serving. Um, if And their approval levels are regularly checked amongst their constituents. And if they drop below a certain percentage, they can lose their political position and, and uh, an election will be held for it. But the interesting thing is the people, the politicians are given sufficient authority within their area to accomplish tasks. So they're problem solvers. They're not not just po meaningless politicians just having meetings. Uh, also, they have uh, where people are chosen from different places around the world at random just to sit in and and can actually um, you know submit proposals and comment on on things and this this kind of stuff. They have telepaths. Uh, their telepaths are held to high ethical standards and those ethics are tested regularly. There's no lobbying, no greed, no politicians in the pocket of you know large companies. Uh, but they're also very strong. They're not bullied by other human or alien political systems. So well worth a read. I'd suggest, um, you know, have, pick it up. Uh, you know, Gene Johnson, uh, First Salic War. Uh, have a look at it. Have a read. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Please hit the like and subscribe button uh, down below. Uh, that will let you know when there's going to, when there's new videos created. And did I miss one uh, in the comments? Put in your favorites. Uh, let me know which ones you, you think that I missed that I should have looked at. These are just the ones I've come across on my own. Uh, comment on if you've read any of these books and what you thought of the political system. I'd love to hear from you. And if you want more help, you can find me at captaintime.com. I have online courses, one-on-one -on -one coaching, custom training videos and webinars, and of course, I have a book.
or two, another one coming up soon. So thank you so much for listening.